Hey guys, today I want to introduce the first episode of my new series, NYC. NYC obviously stands for Know Your Cigar. And today on Know Your Cigar, we are talking about... Kohiba! So, to start talking about the origins of the Cohiba Company, I think the best place to begin would be with the man, Fidel Castro himself. I used to see the man smoking a very aromatic, very nice cigar, and I asked him what brand he was smoking. He told me that it was a special blend, but that it came from a friend who makes cigars, and he gave them to him. I said, let's find this man. I tried the cigar, and I found it so good that we got in touch with him and asked him how he made it. Then we set up the El Laguita factory and he explained that the blend of tobacco he used. He told me which leaves he used from which tobacco plantations. He also told us about the wrappers he used and other things. We found a group of cigar makers, we gave them the materials, and that is how the factory was founded. Now, Cohiba is known all over the world. So this was actually from a 1994 cigar aficionado interview. The man's name in particular is actually Eduardo Rivera Irizarry. So Eduardo was a trusador in Cuba, but he used to roll fumas in his free time. A fuma is a name given to a cigar that's rolled by the trusador for his own personal stash. Uh, so usually these fumas uh, are usually fairly thin, not always, but they used to be very thin back in the day, and they usually ended with a nice pigtail because caps were kind of time consuming. It was much easier to just tie up the knot. That was the easiest way. Normally what would happen is the trussadors that would work at the factories, they would have scraps and leftover short filler, and they would take that, they would roll it up into these uh, cigars, and that would be the fumas that they would smoke. So the exact size that Eduardo rolled for Castro were unknown, but were supposedly uh, they were actually a grand panatella size, which also happened to be Castro's favorite size as well. That and the Lancero. On that note, by the way guys, there you go. We actually have a Cohiba Lancero right here. And as you know, my last episode, I fused one of these bad boys with the Padron. So we'll see how that turns out in about six months. So after all that, in 1966, the Laguita factory was officially open for business. Now, the Laguita factory itself has a ton of history behind it, and I'll probably end up making a video just about that factory itself. But what's interesting is that in 1966, with the establishment of the Laguita factory, this is also the year that the first mass production Lancero was created. This cigar was a seven and a half by 38. So again, this right here. This is also called the Laguita number one. So originally, uh, this cigar wasn't even called Cohiba yet, and what they were done is they were created and only made to give out to diplomats, to give out to dignitaries, to give out to heads of state. So they were only, only made for very, very special people. One of the more popular people to smoke this cigar was actually Che Guevara, one of Fidel Castro's personal friends, and he used to actually puff on the Laguita one all the time. So after the Laguita factory was established, it took another two years in 1968 for the Cuban government to officially establish the Cohiba Company. Now that we're actually looking at the creation of the Cohiba Company itself, I think it's a perfect time to dwell into the origins of the name. The word Cohiba actually originated from the Taino word for tobacco. We got this cigar, right, called Cohiba, the Cohiba Company. They're still producing cigars only to give out to diplomats and heads of state. So what starts happening is after after a couple of years, the name Cohiba starts being whispered amongst all the connoisseurs. And also since Cohiba was Castro's personal smoke, they took the utmost care of the tobacco and gave it the most amount of time and the most amount of attention. So it did end up being some of the best tobacco in the world at the time as well. And that also added to the hype. For about a decade or two, 
nothing was really going on with Cohiba. The Lagita factory was producing cigars, but again, very, very small quantities. I would say over the next decade, decade and a half, they only produced several thousand boxes of the Cohiba cigars. That's how rare they were. Now, everything came to a head in the year 1982. This is the year that Cohiba would finally start mass producing their cigars. So these shipments of Cohiba, the first shipments that were sent out, actually coincided with the 1982 World Cup that was being held in Spain at the time. To be perfectly honest, they only shipped out several boxes of these Cohiba cigars. I would say some of the top cigar shops only got maybe five to 10 boxes for the whole year. So the first couple of years, it was still extremely limited. For the next several years, people actually did get a chance to really dwell into the cigar and try and see what Cohiba was really about. The first three sizes that were created by the Cohiba brand was actually called the Lagita 1, the Lagita 2, and the Lagita 3. Or, better known as the Panatella, the Corona Especial, and the Lancero. I do have a Lancero right here. Take a look at that bad boy. Oh, and look at the plumage on that. Beautiful. I will be reviewing this eventually. So something that you might wanna notice is that the three sizes that were made were actually quite thin. Uh, they were 28 and 38 ring gauge respectively. And this is because again, back in the day, these were the preferred smokes of Castro. He really did like his cigars very, very thin. Several years later in 1989, Cohiba actually dropped three more Marcas. So they were more traditional sizes and people that liked more like their Robustos and their Churchills were actually really, really pleased with this release. This is when they released the Robusto, the Exquisito and the Esplendido. To give you a reference, the Robusto is four and seven eighths by 50. The Exquisito is five by 33 and the Esplendido was a seven by 47. So that was more akin to a Churchill. These first six sizes that were produced by Cohiba were actually called the Linea Classica, or the Classic line in English. Luckily, we didn't have to wait too long for a new release. The Siglo line came out only three years after. 1992, we got the Siglo 1 through 5. And to add to that line, in 2002, we also had, that's right, the Siglo 6, which I happen to have right here. The Siglo line was actually also known as the Linea 1492 and it was made to commemorate Columbus finding the Americas now This is something really really interesting that I want to get into Conspiracy theories <laughs> so Here's a little backstory Zeno Davidoff at the time known as the king of cigars was actually producing his own Davidoff cigars in Cuba in the Lagita factory That's right Davidoff's were actually made in Cuba at one point in time I am actually lucky enough to own one of these Cuban Davidoffs. Take a look at how brown that cellophane is. And I don't know if you're able to see it, but if you look on the side, boom, you see Havana, Cuba. Sick, right? This little thing, the number one, cost me $150. 1991, Zeno Davidoff publicly took 100,000 Cuban Davidoffs and burn them in the street. You might be asking yourself, what the hell? Why did he do that? Well, the answer is simple. Zeno Davidoff was very unhappy with the quality of the cigars that Cuba was pumping out, and this was pretty much his way of saying, our contract is over. 1991, Zeno Davidoff stops producing Davidoffs in Cuba. 1992, the Siglo line is created. Hmm, mysterious, mysterious. If you put two and two together, pretty much what we're seeing is that Zeno Davidoff left, and what happened is Cohiba had this hole in the Lagita factory. The Lagita factory was used to producing all these unique sizes and cigars, so then what they did is, once they dropped the Davidoff name, my theory is that they turned those Davidoffs into Siglos. And if we compare the sizes of the Davidoffs to the Siglos, we can actually see by comparison, how they relate. Really quickly, I wanna list off the Siglo so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. The Siglo 1 is a four inch by 40. Siglo 2 is five and one eighths by 42. Siglo 3 is six and one eighths by 42. The Siglo 4 is five by five eighths by 46. Siglo 5 is six and three fourths by 43. Finally, the Siglo 6 is five and seven eighths 
by 52, the biggest one out of the Siglo series. So now without going into a whole bunch of special edition Cohibas that came out between 1992 and the 2000s, I wanna get into the next line that they produced as far as their mass production goes. So this is of course the Maduro line. So the Maduro line was actually really, really big for Cohiba and Cuba as a whole because Cuba was at the time not really known for their Maduro wrappers. Now they do have several, okay, but before they really didn't pump out any at all. Now because of this, when they came out with the Maduro line, people were hyped. Actually the Maduro line was produced in 2007, so as you can see, there was a good chunk of time before the next release from the previous release. Time for some rumors. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> Supposedly, some of the rappers that they use in the Cohiba Maduro line don't actually come from Cuba. Now again, this is pure speculation. Yeah, this is something that I've heard and it does hold a little credence. Again, just because Cuba does not really produce Maduro rappers at all. One thing that's really great about the Cohiba Maduros is that supposedly each rapper is aged for a minimum of five years, which really, really does make for an exceptional smoke. Oh, so, so sweet. The Maduro 5 line came in three sizes. We have the Genios, which is five and a half by 52. We have the Magicos, which is four and a half by 52. And we have the Secretos, which is four and three eighths by 40. And that's what I'm holding right here in my hand. Now, the Maduros were a big deal, like I said, because Cuba wasn't really pumping them out. But I gotta say, the next cigar that they released, that's the one that really drove the hype home. We, of course, are talking about the Bahikes. So the Bahikes were actually the next uh, main production cigar that was made by Cohiba. Really quickly before we jump into it any further, I do want to talk about the name Bahike. The name Bahike actually comes from the chieftain or the priest that would conduct the ceremonies in the Native American culture, okay, using the tobacco plant. So the one that would conduct the tobacco ceremonies, that was called the Bahike. So what makes the Bahike so expensive by the way, ranging close to between 80 and $120, depending on size, is the fact that the Bahike is known as like the magna culpa of the Cohiba brand. Supposedly, they use the great best tobacco, the best rollers, the best everything. And actually, the original 4,000 Bahikes that came out were actually rolled all by one person, a woman named Norma. Now, another thing that makes the Bahike particularly special is that the Bahike uses a leaf called the Medio Tempo. Medio Tempo is actually the tippity tippity top of a tobacco plant. So what, really quickly, what you have is down at the bottom you have the Velado, which is the lightest leaf. In the middle you have the Seco, and all the way at the top you have the Lajero. And then about one out of every six or seven plants you have something that grows on top of the Lajero, and that's called the Super Lajero, or the Medio Tempo. The Bihikes are probably one of the most sought after cigars out there. Everybody and their mother wants one. So the first Bihike that was produced was actually before the Maduro line in 2006. But this was a very limited run of 4,000 cigars that like I said were rolled by one woman, Norma. And they were meant to be limited edition so they weren't actually thinking about producing them any further after that. They were made to commemorate the 40 year anniversary of the Cohiba company. But a couple years later in 2010, Cohiba actually reintroduced the Bihike line, okay? And started selling them in mass. The three sizes that were made in the Bihike were actually the 52, the 54, and the 56. Another name for these three cigars is actually the Legita 4, the Legita 5, and the Legita 6. Just by the name, Lakita 4, 5, and 6, you could tell just how important the Bihikes were to the Cohiba Marco. Just gonna list off the sizes real quick. We have the Bihike 52. The Bihike 52 is a 4 by 5 eighths by 52, all right? The Bihike 54 is a 5 by 5 eighths by 54, and the Bihike 56 is a 6 and a half by 56. All in all, fairly big cigars, fairly fat, all over 50 ring gauge which, you know, is, 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 I would say, not too common for Cubans. Cubans tend to be a little bit less than 50 ring gauge. That's all we got for the Bahikes. Now, um, there wasn't any more lines that were produced uh, mass production for Cohiba, but there were a couple of single size cigars that were made in mass production, and I do want to bring those up. So one of the more, more popular Cohibas that people really seem to enjoy is the Cohiba Pyramides Extra, which is a tapered end. Bad Boy was first mass produced in 2012 and has a hefty six and a quarter by 54 ring gauge, so it's pretty, pretty fat. 
Yes, tapered Cohibas did come out in the past, but they were only limited editions and they were never mass produced. So I still do think that this cigar is worth mentioning just because it was the first mass produced tapered Cohiba that was created. Well, next one I wanna mention is actually called the Medio Siglo. It was a really, really cool little sucker that came out. So this one was actually produced in 2016 and it was a four by 52 ring gauge. So it was short and fat. So if you wanted to get like a quick 40 minute Cohiba experience, those were absolutely perfect. And everybody was super excited when they came out. Well, that's it folks, that pretty much wraps up our regular production Cohibas. Now what I'd like to do is get into a little bit of more limited edition. Cohibas. So if I were to talk about every single limited edition and every single small batch Cohiba that came out, this would literally be a four hour video. So we're gonna go into the most popular ones as far as limited editions go, okay? And some honorable mentions. And something that I noticed that was super interesting is that Co Cuba and Habanos in general has something called the regional line, which is regional cigars that they produce for different regions. They have the Great Batanias, they have the Spanias, you know, they have the, the, the UAEs, so they have different cigars that they make specifically for different international markets. Something that I found that was super interesting is that Cohiba has never made a regional cigar, and I did not know that until I started researching this video. It did make a lot of limited edition cigars. The first limited edition Cohiba came out in 2001, and the last one that was produced was actually came out in 2017. In between that time, seven other limited edition cigars were produced for the Cohiba Marca. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but the first one that came out in 2001 was the limited edition Pyramides. And the last one that came out was in 2017, which was the Talisman. Some people say that the Talisman actually has a Maduro wrapper. So think of the Maduro 5, but fatter, better aged. That's pretty much what you get when you're smoking the Talisman. Now we're gonna talk about two final cigars that I wanna bring up. And these are extremely, extremely small batch cigars, but they're some of the ones that I would chop off a finger to get. For the 35 year anniversary of Cohiba, they actually produced the Cohiba A. This bad boy was nine and a quarter inches and it had a 47 ring gauge. So it was like this big. It was about the ring gauge of a Churchill and apparently it took about three hours to smoke. They only made about several thousand of these cigars and they were made quite a while ago. So probably very, 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 very few of them exist now. The next cigar I want to bring up is arguably one of the most coveted Cuban cigars on the market, and that's the Cohiba Grandioso. Now, the Grandioso is very, very, very special because it is the first mass production Cuban cigar that was made with a 60 ring gauge. Just to explain to you what that means, you can go to Cuba and you can go to Roller and you can roll you something that's 60 ring gauge or fatter. But if you wanted to buy a already rolled cigar made by Habanos, you were, could not get anything that was 60 ring gauge until this Cohiba came out. This sucker was seven inches by 60 ring gauge. That's how big it was. Just to, get, just to show you the whole rarity of this cigar, it came in a humidor of 50 cigars and only 50 humidors were made. And these humidors were only auctioned off during the Habanos Festival and they went for several hundred thousand, several hundred thousand dollars. So that's it. I mean, we pretty much went over all the Cohiba cigars in the main production line and a couple of more like rarer ones as well. But we pretty much did get the, the general gist of all the Cuban cigars and how they fit on the timeline from when Cohiba was first conceptualized to present day. Now we're not done yet. What I do want to discuss really quickly is the region where Cohiba is produced as well as the actual tobacco that is used when making the Cohiba cigars because they also really do influence the brand as a whole. So to start off this conversation, I want to say a lot of this stuff is really, really hard to come by. Cohiba tobacco, the brand itself has many, many secrets and it, some of the information can be very misleading on purpose. Uh, from the location of where the tobacco is grown all the way to which tobacco is used. All of it is practically unknown, but to a few people that are actually in Cuba. Cohiba tobacco is actually grown on some of the richest and most well fertilized soil in all of Cuba. So this actually comes from the San Juan and San Luis zones of the Volte Abajo region of Cuba. And what makes it so amazing is that this region of Cuba has this wonderful red limestone soil, which gives a lot of nutrients to the leaf. It's the Cohiba that nice barnyard flavor that we're all used to. But uh, because of all the secrecy behind Cohiba, like I said, statistics are very hard to come by, but we do have 
one very interesting statistic that I think tells us everything that we need to know. 1992, about 10 farms total, equaling to about 700 acres, was producing Coho Cohiba tobacco post-1982 release during the Spanish World Cup, okay? So this is when they were planning to really pump them out. Now, what we do know is out of those 700 acres, Cohiba only used 350 acres of tobacco. That's how strict Cuba's uh, quality control for the Cuban tobacco is. Do you understand? They literally got rid of half of the tobacco just because of their quality control. And that just shows you how much effort they put into the Cohiba tobacco. That's what makes it so freaking amazing. To create an extra oomph in the Cohiba tobacco, the Cuban government actually uses wooden barrels to do a third round of fermentation for the tobacco, giving it a very unique and very full robust flavor that normally other Cuban tobacco doesn't have because they don't go through this step. So guys, that's it. That's my brief, brief history of Cohiba, the cigars they produced, and what makes them so amazing and why they're so coveted. There's some people that'll tell you they don't like Cohiba, and I understand, there's some people that don't like Cubans at all, but I gotta say that I freely find that Cohibas have usually the best draw, the best flavor, the best complexity, and the best evolution out of any Cuban cigar. And I think all these different things that I mentioned earlier is the reason why it is truly one of the best brands on the planet. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed watching this video about Cohiba, one of personally my favorite brands. Hopefully this inspires you to go out, try to get a couple of Cubans. Go to iHavanas.com. They do have legit Cohibas that you can get in the States. You guys to try these Cohibas so you can really tell me what you think because personally, I'm a big fan. And on that note, next video, guess what it is? Partigas! We're gonna go from one of the newest companies that were created in Cuba, which is Cohiba, to one of the most oldest companies in Cuba, which is Partigas. See you next time. I love cigars, blah, blah, blah.